Bonjour. Welcome to Miss Lucy's Classic Cajun Culture and Cooking. And I'm your host, Miss Lucy, and this is Captain Tracy. And we're going to have a great time today because we're going out to dredge oysters in the great Louisiana oyster beds. And we'll be going back to the kitchen and cooking us a wonderful oyster meal today. So stay with us, chef. Don't go away. We'll be right back. All right, Captain Tracy, along. The Louisiana Seafood Marketing Board is a proud sponsor of Lucy's Classic Cajun Culture and Cooking Show. The Bayou State enjoys an outstanding culinary tradition. At the center of that tradition is seafood. And no wonder, Louisiana is one of the nation's leading seafood suppliers. And the Louisiana Department of Economic Development. Whether it's crawfish processing or meat packing, Louisiana is the business location for food processing. With infrastructure, site selection assistance, and workforce training. Louisiana, the shape of food technology. What makes Louisiana so special? Our beautiful bayous and grand plantation homes surrounded by old oak trees. Our music and joie de vie. Our unique way of cooking the bounty we harvest from the land and the water. It's our communities, our businesses, our people. That's why I love Louisiana and why I want to share my precious Cajun heritage with you. I'm glad you could join me in my kitchen today. I'll be cooking another one of my favorite seafoods, oysters. There are many special ways to enjoy them, three of which I'll share with you today. Then later on, I'll show you what I've learned about oyster cultivation. I've always enjoyed eating oysters, not realizing how much hard work was involved. Now let's get to cooking, shall Well, Well, look who's here. Hey, well, hello. baby. Hey. Good to see you. Good to see you. Ooh, look. Oh, pretty. that's OK. Pretty. That's all right. I don't mind a kiss from you. That's right, because when she was little, I used to kiss her. And oh, they hated that. And the lipstick but, all. Yeah, yeah, all over. Mm -hmm. This is my daughter, Melissa. <laughs> And of course, without her, my life would have been very boring. True. <laughs> so, this is true. Well, what brings you to my house this morning? Well, you said you needed some help. You know, you said you wanted me to shuck a few oysters. So right. I'm going right. to try it. I'm not a, a professional at it, but I'll give it a try oh, and see what we can okay. do. Okay. Well, where did you learn how to do this? Uh, well, sort of. Well, um, once or twice in my life, I've been to a bar. And one of them happened to be an oyster bar. Okay. And um, so I started talking to the oyster mm -hmm. shucker. Mm -hmm. And uh, his name's uh, Raymond Piazza. And he took the time to show me kind of how to do it. You uh -huh. know? But he said, like, it takes a little bit of practice. But, you know, I'll, I'll do what I can for you today. Well, and, good. I, I, I hope that you have time to, to be patient and maybe teach me after a while. Because mm -hmm. first, I'm going to have to start cooking this, mm -hmm. you know, because we're going to have some oyster chowder today. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Mama, mm -hmm. pretty Mama, my mama, mama, you know, she would have had a quiz if I'd have been cooking oysters in a chowder. Because we ate fried oysters, mm -hmm. raw oysters. Well, you remember when oh, you were yeah. a little girl and the, oh, yeah. and the dressing and all? Oh, yeah. Gosh, she loved it. But we never, never incorporated uh, milk with seafood or mm -hmm. anything like that. Because you know no. what the old sayings were, huh, Missy? Mm. Well, I know one of one them. One of them. Well, what, what was the one you remember the, from the one, the one that I remember her saying was, do not eat raw oysters. Um, uh, on the months that do not have an R in it. Correct. The R rule. Uh, right, yeah. the R rule. Well, mm -hmm. of course, that was an old wives tale because actually I eat raw oysters <laughs> anytime, yeah. I, you know, really. And they're, they're beautiful. These Louisiana oysters, uh, which Captain Tracy, of course, you know, was so kind yeah. to let us have. Uh, they're, they're beautiful. And, and I think well, you can eat oysters anytime. Now, another yeah. thing, though, that she did say mm -hmm. was you don't eat seafood with milk because that was supposed to form a rock well no a that that was a poison <laughs> that was going to oh, be formed okay. now the rock comes in where the oyster was put in a whiskey oh okay and she claims that would form a rock in your stomach so but we're not going to go there because no, no, that's no. old wives no, tales that's, but i tell true. you what you better get to uh, shucking yeah, because get to I, shucking. I really need your help today and All in right. the meantime i'm going to get to cooking this wonderful Chowder. This is going to be an oyster chowder. And of course, as I said, we didn't have this when I was growing up, but I really wanted to fix something sort of different. And I got to thinking, what can I cook 
that will taste real good, be a little different, because we've fried so many. Cajuns just eat fried foods all the time. So I've come up with this recipe. This is my original. So uh, I, I think you're gonna enjoy it though, Missy, because you really, you know, the new generation, they like new <laughs> things. And of course, she's yeah. a little bit younger than I am. Although, you know, we're not gonna go there either, huh, no, babe? But I do uh, love uh, chowders. You know, yes. I do love that. Yes, oh, remember when we went to, uh, uh, well, it was up in, in Canada we were in mm -hmm. uh, and, and New you, Brunswick Territory. Oh, right, yeah. right, and you just enjoy mm -hmm. it so much. Oh, yeah. So what I'm going to do here, let me teach you how I did mine while you're going to be shucking, okay? okay? Whole lot of shucking going on, man. <laughs> <laughs> but Bob put her and me in the kitchen because she's a wonderful cook. Oh, she can almost, I cook her mama, well, but you know, I, I didn't from the that. best. I, you? That's right, that's right. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to saute these onions in margarine. Now you can use butter if you want to or oil, but I use the margarine. See how pretty and shiny they are, and this is how. You're going to do it. And then to this, this is so quick and easy, it is just unbelievable. To this, I'm going to add onion tops. Of course, this is chopped green onions. Uh, people call them shallots, onion tops, green onions. We call them onion tops. So uh, we grow these in our garden. And of course, you always, a Cajun always has to have some onion tops in, at home. Okay, you stir this real good. To that, I'm going to add some parsley. Now, you know, Missy. Mm -hmm. I like parsley too. I know. <laughs> so this is going to really add to the flavor. Mm -hmm, girl, um, you do good. Hey. Wow. <laughs> well, he Raymond taught you right, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yes, so, he did. All right. Oh, that smells good. Mm -hmm. See really that? Good. Yeah. Oh boy. Should, you know what? That parsley, when I added it, really, really has a good aroma. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize it smells so good. I guess it just. Mm hmm. Mm, this is gonna be great. Now to this, of course, the next ingredient is the gorgeous oysters. This is what I'm going to add. Now, I'm going to add also the juice to this. I'm going to add a lot because you can't have too many oysters, I guess, in an oyster chowder, huh, Missy? True, true. Mm -hmm. Good. All right, stir it up. I'm going to season it. Now, in this, I'm going to use just the salt and pepper, mm -hmm. just like this. Okay, make sure you've got lots of good seasoning because that matters. You want to have that good flavor. You don't want to have too much now because actually if you over season your food, you just can't taste the good flavor of it. So, all right, look at this. Mmm, smell those good oysters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gosh, lordy. So, I'm going to add this half and half. Now, Missy, although if you want it creamier or richer, you can always, oh, well, all good cooks are messy, messy cooks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, I must be a real good one. This is half and half that I've added. And make sure you just, all right, cook it there. Now, if you want it richer, you can add just the cream, the whipping cream. Or if you don't like it as rich, mm -hmm. you can add just plain milk. Mm -hmm. But, you know, today, I don't know, I just got in the half and half mode, you know? Mm -hmm. So now, now I'm going to cook these, and when the uh, edges are going to start curling kind of flowery-like, mm -hmm. that's when they're going to really, you know, okay. be cooked. All right, mm. let's let them cook. And you right. promised me you'd show me how to shuck. Try. Go ahead. Show you how to shuck. Yeah. Go to it, girl. Uh, what Good you luck. know, it, it's real important, you know, you have to have something to protect your hands. Okay. Because you can injure okay. yourself. And you just get your oyster, you put it in your towel or mm. a glove, an oyster shucking glove, and there's some, there's a joint right here. And okay. what you do is you get your oyster knife and you pop the joint uh -huh. and then you scrape the top of your shell like that and then you pop your little wow. shell off. Oh, that then, seems simple. Yeah, then you just, and it's attached to the bottom here, you just oh, kind of run okay. your knife along and right because you're going to, well, you can throw it in there too with your fingers. Right, okay. But you want to try? Good. Yeah, let me try. Give it a try. Well, hand me one here. I don't know if I can do this. Let's <laughs> see. I'm not very coordinated when it comes to things like, oh, you dip it in there. And then, and then yeah. scrape the top a little bit. Oh, scrape the top. Oh. Yeah. Because it makes it. You know, this is too complicated. I'd rather <laughs> eat them. That's it. All right. Then, of course, you catch it like this. Mm -hmm. And just pull your. Oh, look at that. Now, 
I'm an expert. Yeah, well, you didn't need me. You could have done this yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt that seriously. Okay. Oh, oh well, let me eat that one. Okay. Hey, let me well, have um, a. Oh, what would you like? Because I've already got you a platter. Very done. good. I just set it there. I'll set it on top of this. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good job. Man. Dip it in my sauce. Of mm -hmm. course, you know, some, sometimes I think I like to eat oysters just for the sauce. sauce. But. <laughs> mm. Oh, wow. Mmm, some don donle friso. Oof. Gives me a chill. Yeah, that's a good thing. That's a that's very a good, good thing. thing. Right, right. <laughs> Mm, right. Well, I'll hand this back to you. Okay. Because actually, <laughs> I better check this here, you know. So this is really. Oh, look, Miss, yeah. it's cooking good. Because yeah. you don't want to boil. No, 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 no. Boil. You want to no, no. just kind of let it sit right. Okay. Correct. That's right. Okay. So this is. Look, you see how the edges are curling? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that you don't want to overcook your oysters mm -hmm. either. See, your milk, you don't want to boil. So this is really. And you serve that with mm -hmm. crackers. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's all you need. Mm -hmm. So now. I'm going to show them how to make the, the sauce mm -hmm. and also fry oysters later. Mm -hmm. But right now, you know, we're just going to focus on this. Let, let me see if I can do another, another one. Another one? All right. I might be able to do this, you know? Here you go. Put it in my hand here. Very good. So, well, thanks to Captain Tracy. We had some good oysters to cook mm -hmm. today. We may not be good oyster shuckers, Missy, but we have a good time <laughs> trying. Yeah. You'll have to pass by Captain Tracy's uh, boat and get some uh, oysters. You just get some down more. there and, uh, hey, while you're there, he may even let you go ahead and uh, drive his boat. I'm hoping because you, you took it the whole time. Well, you, I know. Except when he had to take it over because you <laughs> popped a, <coughs> had a little. Well, they'll, they'll well, see. I, yeah, uh, we'll on. show them what happened. Sure. So let me share that with you, okay? We're off to the oyster beds in the lugger. Oops, I almost ran over a crab trap. So Captain Tracy takes over the wheel. Oh, and there's our beautiful Louisiana brown pelican. Tracy drops the grate over the side of the lugger into the water to begin dredging for our oysters. And we sit back to circle the bed as we dredge. Gotcha, Freddy. It's time to pull the grate back into the lugger. The oysters are then rinsed before being wheeled on board. And what a catch. Oops, wrong show. Catch you later. The oysters are unloaded on two tables for sorting. This is Jody. So actually what you're doing, Jody, you're cleaning the oysters is what you call that? They call it culling, call it culling oysters. Culling oysters. So you're knocking off all the extra shells. Yes. Now this one has, I see, is that some baby oysters you got on there? Yeah, it's all baby oysters. That's all baby oysters. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Five, six baby oysters. And that's all going to grow onto that if it had been left in the bed. Yeah. You call that an oyster bed, don't you? OK. And Freddie is also culling oysters. Two piles are made. Some of the oysters are thrown inside the lugger on the floor to be used as seed for the oyster beds. The other pile is to be sent to market. Ah, c'est comme ça que vous êtes les roues. Et quand vous êtes connecté, vous êtes après faire. Oh, no, 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 vous êtes le manche. Je peux pas. Can't get any fresher than this. Yum. C'est bon. Non, moi, je vais petite. Oui. Je ne mange pas les grosses. Je peux juste pas les manger. Oh, c'est trop gros. Oh non. Et comment ça? Oh non. And this is what it's like to dredge for oysters. Lots of hard work all day long. Finally, we sack the oysters to get them ready for the market. These are little demi sacks, only 50 pounds, and I'm going to take one of these home with me. And here we are coming in at night with the boat full of sacked oysters. Each sack is labeled with where and when they were dredged. The oysters will stay alive due to the fact that they contain their own water. 
Depending on the temperature, they may be kept for three to five days before being sent to market. Many pearls are on board. Unloading these 100-pound sacks is yet another chore before the day's work is done. The conveyor belt carries the catch up into the truck that will make the delivery to restaurants in New Orleans. And that ended our very fun-filled day. Man, that was great. Captain Tracy let me steer his oyster lugger out to the oyster beds. And I only ran over one crab trap, and I had no speeding tickets. Guess that qualifies me for the captain, uh, you know, captain's title. I may even take over his boat now. Well, back to cooking, because I promised y'all I would teach y'all how I fry my oysters at home. So actually, I'm draining these oysters. These are gorgeous Louisiana oysters, and I drained them in. Of course, this, you know, is very special to me, my mama's little strainer. I always use it. You never season your oysters before you cook them. I don't anyway. You can do what you want, but I, all right. Let me put them in here, drop them here. And then you don't season the uh, cornmeal either. You drop it in cornmeal and you coat them real well. Of course, my grease is heating up. As you can tell, I've got my onions in there to keep the grease from burning and also to tell me when my grease is hot enough. And I think they're talking to me. They're saying, okay, honey, your grease is hot enough. So here we go. I'm gonna drop these washes in here. Yes, just right. You don't wanna fry them too slow because you don't want your oysters to be greasy. You want them to be coated, just golden brown. Okay, there, whoa, love these things. They're great, all right. Mm. Oh, yes. Very good. Well, I guess that's enough. You don't want to put too many in your pot. Yeah, that, that'll be fine. Let me see how that's going to be. That here for whenever they're ready, because right when they're just right, you take them out and you put them on a the platter and you eat them while they're warm, and that's when you put your salt and pepper on them. Of course, now, I like mine fried crisps, very crisp. Some people don't like them like that. They just like to eat them kind of salt, but anyway. Well, let me show you what my favorite dessert to serve with a meal like this is. Of course, you can also serve it with other meals. And this is gonna be my strawberry pie. Now, what I do, I just take some sugar, put it in a pot, cornstarch, throw it on top, mix it up real well. Because if you don't, when you put water in there, it's all gonna lump up. Something about sugar being mixed up with flour or cornstarch that keeps it all from lumping up and you don't have as hard a time. Now you're gonna take your water and you're gonna add it to this. Now what I'm gonna have to do with this is cook it until it thickens. Of course, for time element here, I won't have the time to do that. So I'm gonna show you what it's supposed to look like. You see how I mixed it up real well? It's like this. Of course, it takes about five to 10 minutes on a medium low fire. And then it's gonna get like this. Of course, this is as thick as you want it. So you, then to this, I'm gonna add this strawberry gelatin. Mix it up real good in here. That's gonna add to the flavor and then the color. Mix it up real well. Okay. Mmm, this is real, real good. Then to this, you add strawberries, of course. Okay, very good. Okay. Now what I've done before, I've lined an already baked crust with strawberries, you line that, and of course you almost can't have too many strawberries in a strawberry pie. So this will be thickened. Of course it's gonna be a little bit less thick than it's gonna end up after you refrigerate it. Okay, see how pretty this is? This is gorgeous. And you just throw it on top of your, your strawberries here in your shell. Okay. Good. Beautiful. You whip top and goes right on top. And ooh, honey, this is gonna be wonderful. My niece, Deborah, 
taught me how to do this, and it's so quick and easy, and honey, it's delicious. So I really enjoy cooking it for special occasions. And oops, all good cooks are messy cooks. All right, see how pretty this is? Of course, you can decorate it any way you want. I've got one of these little, little Louisiana strawberries. You see how little it is? <laughs> Gorgeous. Now, let me go check my, there's your pie. <laughs> Let me go check my oysters. I don't want to burn them. Oh, my goodness. I never forgive myself. Oh, look how wonderful, beautiful. They are nice and, well, they're not quite as crispy as I would want mine, but this is perfect for company. A lot of people don't like them really crisp. Crisp. I like mine crisp. This is beautiful. Yes, ooh, wonderful. Now, some people like to eat their oysters or cooked or raw with a cocktail sauce. I'm gonna teach you how I make my cocktail sauce. Of course, I've got some ketchup in here. To the ketchup, I'm gonna add some lemon juice. Let me, and then I'll have some chopped up or grated onions. It's like this, see? Very good. Now, Mr. Charlie McKenzie, a very dear friend of mine, always supplies me with the horseradish. So this is Mr. Charlie's horseradish that he gave to me. And I really appreciate this, because nothing like homegrown horseradish, and he sure makes a good job of it. All right, now you mix this up real well. Okay. You add your salt and pepper to this. Salt and pepper, woo, and Louisiana hot sauce. Well, this is your pepper sauce that I, I cook with so much. Mix it up real well. Of course, I always add mayonnaise, mayonnaise, like Melissa would say, no, mom, it's not mayonnaise, it's mayonnaise, but I'll say, she's not around right now, she's still on the boat, so I'm gonna add just a dab of mayonnaise to this, because it kind of smooths it out. It gives it that wonderful flavor that mayonnaise likes to put into some foods. Mm -hmm. And here's your cocktail sauce that will be served with your raw oysters or your fried oysters, which are gorgeous. Of course, now you always need a salad to accommodate a meal, which Cajuns seldom had too many salads, but we always had lettuce, tomatoes, and whatever. So I'm gonna show you how to make a real quick and easy lettuce and tomato salad, of course. You gotta start with famous old pint jar here. I've got some oil in here, cooking oil. Add some vinegar. And some salt. And pepper. Just typical, you know, just typical dressing. Shake, 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 because I don't see what women do without this in the, in the kitchen. Ooh, yes, plus you get a lot of, uh, I guess that's how I keep my weight so thin. Just pour it right on top. And it is just great, it's wonderful. So you let it set overnight even, it might even be a little bit better. So this is your completed meal. It's been great cooking with you today. Hope you've had as good a time as I have. Remember, eat oysters and live and love longer. This is very special time for me. I get a chance to sit down, relax, and read my mail from my fans. And I want to share this one with you. Marie and John Armon and their dog Herman from New Orleans write, Dear Miss Lucy, I look forward to seeing your show every week. Your love for cooking cannot go unnoticed. I bought two of your cookbooks, one for myself and one for a friend. I have enjoyed many of the meals. Your cooking style and many of the dishes you cook are very familiar. My ancestry goes back to Cajun, Louisiana, and it makes me feel so good to know the traditional meals are still served. I had forgotten some of them, but you brought them back to life for me. Keep up the great work while me and my friends join you every week in front of the TV. Sincerely, your loyal fans. Thank you, Marie and John and Herman, for writing this precious letter. And thank you for joining me.
Ça, ça me fait du mal Look us up on the World Wide Web at lpb.org. The Louisiana Seafood Marketing Board is a proud sponsor of Lucy's Classic Cajun Culture and Cooking Show. The Bayou State enjoys an outstanding culinary tradition. At the center of that tradition is seafood. And no wonder, Louisiana is one of the nation's leading seafood suppliers. And the Louisiana Department of Economic Development. Whether it's crawfish processing or meat packing, Louisiana is the business location for food processing with infrastructure, site selection assistance, and workforce training. Louisiana, the shape of food technology. <laughs> 